Greetings and welcome to the arcade. This is episode 20. We have some very special guests for this episode. Jeffrey Lee, the creator of the iconic arcade classic Cubert, and Carrie Cheney, creator, operator, and owner of the Place Retro Arcade in Cincinnati, Ohio. So without further delay, let's get this episode rolling. Hi, my name is Kerry Cheney. I'm owner of the Place Retro Arcade in Cincinnati, Ohio. And I'm standing here with Jeff Lee, the creator of Cubert. Pleasure to be here, Kerry. <laughs> <laughs> it's my first visit to Cincinnati. Yeah. All right, let's let's see. Jeff's gonna show us how to play a little Cubert. Uh, and tell us a little yeah, bit about it. Very little, very little. Yeah, let's Oh you have to see. You got a credit? Go. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything you can tell us? Any interesting stories about Cubert? Ooh, well, how did you come up with the, Hubert? It was, uh, as has been said before, this was a, a act of serendipity. Um, I was always a fan of M.C. Escher, and of course he's known for doing these tessellated drawings, uh, sort of cubes and stuff. And so when I started working at Godlieb, naturally I soon transferred this kind of graphic design um, onto a screen just because I liked the way it looked. And then I thought, you know, this could be a, a cool game if there was someone jumping around here and uh, shooting stuff. Cause just thinking shooting game. Yeah. And original idea of snots and boogers, that's why he's got the big nose. Because um, it was going to be a gun. Uh, well, Warren Davis saw this artwork on screen and uh, he was, was learning to program and he wanted to test like uh, binary decisions on the half of these uh, balls. So he took that and then um, asked me if I had characters. Of course, I had this whole game description written up. And he took most of that, threw it away, and designed his own game uh, based on my characters and his art. And it evolved. You know, it was really a, a group thing. We all worked in a big open area anyone could see what you're doing and exchange ideas and make suggestions and Warren was kind of like as well as writing code he was acting as the filter for Oop. my first memory of Qbert was on ColecoVision on the home system mm -hmm. I used to play the heck out of it Actually, my first memory of Cubert was at Showbiz Pizza. Showbiz Pizza. And I, on, I just on, fell in love with it. Yeah, on an, in on, on an arcade machine, right, Jeff? Yeah, oh yeah. 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 yeah, I've met some people at shows and they'll bring in cartridges. Yeah, um, yeah. Coleco or Atari, a lot of them had Atari yeah. uh, <laughs> systems. So yeah, we were, uh, I think we knew early on that this was gonna be a success. We were quite excited and pleased when it, our, our, our hopes and realizations um, you know, came, came to be had. One thing I've noticed, at least in my arcade, it's very popular with women. Women, it, women like Hubert, I, I guess because he's cute. Yeah, yeah. You know? And he's a, like a, he's being victimized. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's, not hurt, he's not hurting anyone. Yeah. Yeah. That's Jeff, a, who came up with the idea for the knocker? Uh, there was a guy named Rick Ty, who was a pinball technician, and he worked in um, our Bensonville plant for some reason, wiring up prototypes and so on. It was his suggestion. It's a great idea. Yeah. 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 yeah you got to keep that thing working. A knocker. I think originally it was supposed to have some extra padding. So it wouldn't be quite as uh, harsh a sound. Dang it. People constantly ask, like, what's, what's that noise? They're looking around the machine. What the <laughs> Why does it keep doing that? So it does require a certain amount of service, huh? Yeah, it, it, it's been known to blow a fuse. I think I got it. I love the sound effects, too. I think the sound effects are great. The, the sound was done by David Thiel. Uh, he did many of our early games. If you're familiar with Rick, oh, 
you're familiar with Reactor? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, he did the sounds on that. I don't see many of those. Um, wonderful rock guitar sound. Uh, very talented guy. And he, you can find stories on YouTube of him explaining how he did all these sounds, how it evolved from uh, from this lousy voice chip that they had, which would not make sounds the way they thought. And because of that, they wound up doing the uh, random number inputs. You're gonna break a world record while you're doing this interview. You sure you don't play this a lot? <laughs> Maybe that's it. You got to be in a kind of zen zone, not be thinking about something else halfway. I very seldom get to this point. Is there a little stickiness on this uh, joystick, or is that? Uh, there weird? could be. Or is it supposed to be that way? Ooh, that was oh, I'll have to check it. Uh, there could be. The management. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to check that. Well, these actually stuff I did years later. Um, oh, okay. The uh, some of it actually there's two varieties of things up there. I'm thinking if it's what I think it is. Um, there are the cousins, which I just imagine as fellow nosers, slightly var variations. Yeah. Uh, but th those up there, the end, right? Th those actually were characters that did not make it into the game. Gotcha. Oh, that's cool. So gotcha. what's on the bottom? Those are my original graph paper drawings, because that's how I did it back in those days. Our graphic tools were very primitive and limited initially. Things did improve. We got a guy named Jim Weiss uh, made me much better tools later, but originally I did them on plain graph paper. Hey, yeah, he did it. And um, then I got it colored in on the right. And then I made paintings, full-size paintings of what, how I would actually have drawn the character. So there's a few others, and I haven't got around to do it. I haven't made posters of them yet. But there's at least two other characters didn't make it into the game. And of course I got a bunch of other characters didn't make it into Three Stooges, for instance. Um, it's getting complicated here. <laughs> no, no, Three Stooges was a, a standalone game. It pretty much had to be because it had, it was three player. So there was three joysticks. So you could have people playing each Stooge. Um, but there aren't many of them around. No. There was a, uh, a deci manufacturing decision made that kind of cut the run short on that. Which is a shame because uh, when I had started originally at Gottlieb, of course we were owned by Columbia Pictures, and it seemed like a natural thing. Oh, Columbia did the Three Stooges shorts. And we thought that should be no problem getting the license to do that. Well, it wasn't that simple. Um, because the uh, property was owned by Moe's son-in-law, a guy named Norman Maurer, so we had to deal with them. And uh, The voices were actually a voice actor. They weren't computer generated. And uh, there was a lot of hardware wizardry going on, lost that memory, because we had so little memory back in those days. Yeah. Um, so this, they had to fly this one guy out, and so he could do all his lines, and uh, record in the studio. And, uh, and then the game didn't go anywhere because they pulled the plug on it. But it, there were a few units out there. So, oh, I waited too long. So, so when you came up with this version of Cubert, did you know that was it? Did you say, I mean, was there, did you kind of knew you had something there when you? Yeah. Because he's such yeah. an iconic figure now. Like, yeah, you know, in Wreck It yeah. Ralph, everybody remembers him. And, but somewhere I have a, I've been writing a memoir of the godly video games. So I've been revisiting my records. My wife will attest I don't throw anything away. So, um, 
and that's it's mostly, good. It's mostly good. True. It's good for us. So I have some journals. My journals aren't all that great. Uh, wh what I found though was in some of my sketchbooks, drawing of a pyramid at that time, and then a little guy, a little character next to that that I drew with jaggies, as we call them. And to my surprise, since I hadn't looked at it in many, many years, yeah. it's not actually Cubert, it's this guy. Really? So originally, so it's Sam. it was Sam. Ah. It was the original guy to be hopping around on a pyramid. Yeah. And then on the side of the cubes are flatworms. Okay. Traveling on the surfaces of the cubes. So that was like an early idea of what to do with that. Right. And again, that's an MC Escher kind of thing because that was one of the motifs that he did um, periodic drawings where all the creatures whether it's horses or flatworms or what have you fish birds they all fit together with no extra space around hmm. so that was another MC Escher thing so that's like that's the earliest deal and it was that Sam type character it's interesting and, and Sam's and, and Sam was named for Sam Russo who's the programmer on Three Stooges Nice. Yeah. Sam's my least favorite character because he keeps changing my blocks. I yeah, I know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like Sam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a pain in the neck. <laughs> anyway, that's base, the basic story there. That's awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. <laughs> I really, I mean, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Glad to uh, have been of service. And I'm really glad to get out here and see this, the place before it closes uh, yeah, down, yeah, man. Yeah. Good, good job you. saving all this stuff. Thank you. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Arcade Hollywood. Special thanks goes out to Jeffrey Lee and Carrie Cheney for taking part in this episode. Once again, wanted to give a shout out to my good friend Mike Miller and his band Origami for providing me with all the excellent music for this channel. You can check out Origami at origami.tumblr.com. Coming soon to Arcade Hollywood. We will take a look at the Atari Classic Xevious. We will be working on a Pac-Man Upright with a 2-bit score ABC kit. And we will have an all-access tour of the place Retro Arcade with Kerry Cheney. This is a great time to subscribe. Don't forget you can check us out on Twitter, Arcade Hollywood at Hollywood Arcade. We are also out there on Facebook and Google+. Please email me with any comments or questions at discohollywood1 at gmail.com. All right, this does it for another episode of Arcade Hollywood. Until next time, rock on.